Let me walk through a couple of the places where you're going to run into issues. Um, and this is regardless of what radio you're using. The most common place, if you bring up your Windows control panel, go to your uh, Windows settings, go into the system part portion of that. You're looking for the sound, um, sound control panel. And if you scroll down a little bit further, you'll find more sound settings. And this is pretty much in the same place on Windows 10 and Windows 11. We're gonna go into more sound settings. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna actually open up your Windows sound control panel. I'm gonna move this out of the way so we can, uh, we can focus in on the Windows sound control panel a little bit. So when you have this set up, you have various playback. Remember, this is the audio out of your computer, which is going into the microphone port on your radio. And you have the recording, which is essentially the microphone of your computer. So that's the speaker port on your radio going into the microphone port. So this is the audio coming into the computer. And this is the audio going out of the computer at this point. When you plug in your USB device, whatever your interface is, whether it be a DigiRig or a SignalLink, you're going to get a new sound device that's going to show up in here. Now, with that, I've gone ahead and I've named mine DigiRig so that it's easier for me to note. If I double click on that, this is where you can get into the property. So you can set the name here and you can change the icon. Default, it comes in as a, a generic icon. This is something that you want to do just to be able to help make sure that it's easy for you to visualize and see. And you want to set this for both the playback and the recording sessions. So within the playback, which is the speaker portion, you want to come over here to levels. Now, if you're using a signaling, more than likely, you're going to want to set your speaker port to be set to value of 100 here. If you're using a digi rig, depending on the radio that you're using, you need to go in and make some adjustments. And if you go onto the digi rig website, you'll find out that what they suggest is they suggest your speakers get set to an, a level of about 80. And that was, turns out to be one of the gotchas that I ran into yesterday, making sure that audio level is set exactly right so that it's calibrated. So when you're turning the dial on your radio and you're trying to get that level indicator to get right to 75%, that is going to be uh, what you're looking for. Next is come over here to enhancements, disable all enhancements. You don't want anything from your computer being mixed up into the audio signal that's going into your radio. So you just disable all of those. Go to advanced. What you're looking for is 16 bit audio, 48,000 Hertz, uh, DVD quality. So just set that. Um, these are both the defaults here. Spatial sound, uh, make sure spatial sound is turned off. So those are the output settings that you're looking for. Next is you want to make sure that you don't have the little green, see this green uh, check mark here? That means that's the default audio device. So you want to make sure that that is not checked on your either sound, uh, either your um, your signal link or on your digi rig. So if it is, you come up to the one that you want everything to go to, make that the default device and the default communication device. This should not have any green check marks or green marks on it at all. Let's go over to recording. And again, here I have my digi rig that's set up and I just double click on it. And this is where, again, you can change the name and change the icon. It just makes it easier for you to be able to manage within your software. We're gonna come over here to the listen. Make sure this is unchecked for listen to this device. That's making sure Windows is listening to the device, not your radio, not the computer. That's Windows that's trying to do that. So you don't want Windows listening to this device at all. You're going to come over here and you do want it to make sure that it's working when you're under battery power. Windows has added all kind of fancy features in here that it'll just turn off stuff to try and help you conserve power. But more than likely, if you're running WinLink, you're going to be doing that on battery power anyway. So make sure that's set. Come up to the next one, custom. This is a big gotcha. This is always on by default. And every time you run a Windows update, it turns this back on. So you got to come in here and uncheck AGC. This is your automatic gain control. You don't want Windows to be doing any adjustment of your signal. You want to do that manually. We're going to come over here to levels. Now, this is a place where you're going to have to figure out what's the right setting for your radio, your interface, your computer to make all this work. On the DigiRig site, what they're saying is that your microphone levels should generally be set in the 20 to 50% range. 
Um, so what I found is that 40 tends to work really well for the setup that I'm using right here with these cables and this particular setup and this particular uh, radio. Under advanced, again, you're looking at 16 bit 4,800 Hertz or 48 kilohertz. Um, and those are pretty much the settings that, that I use for this particular setup. Now, as you change interfaces, like if you change to a different radio, you may find that those settings need to be adjusted. Anytime you run a Windows update, come back in here and look and recheck all of these settings because that's going to be a place where you're really going to have some issues. Once you get that portion set up, then you're going to need to make any setting adjustments on your for your interface. So, for instance, if we're doing VARA FM, um, and I'm going to again, I'm right now I'm set up for the Balfang. I'm going to come up here to settings um, under VARA setup. If you're using a Balfang, now I got a note from Jose saying that um, for FM you should be using the narrow settings. Uh, if you're using a Balfang. However, what I found as I've been testing is if I have it set to narrow by default here, I can't get this to work properly. So I'm not really sure why that is. Um, so I've gone ahead and I've left mine set to, to wide. Um, that's in there. Let's come back into the settings. Let's come down to the sound control panel. This is where you want to set your audio interface. This is what VARA is listening for within your whole Windows setup. So notice when I named in my sound control panel, I named things DigiRig. Look, it's right here in the device input. If I click the drop down menu, it's really easy to make sure you've selected the correct one. Now for a for a sound device for a DigiRig, you're going to look for the USB PMP sound device. The uh, signal link is going to have a slightly different name and do that name that rename your device in your sound control panel. So it's easier for you to figure out. You need to make sure both of those are set correctly. Now on the digi rig, one of the things that they say specifically in the setup is that you want to make sure that your channel is either set to mono or all of the audio is shifted to the left channel. And that is where the DigiRig is actually putting out all of its signal. One of the challenges that I had here is I had this set to both left and right, and I kept getting all these weird audio problems and I wasn't getting my audio to push properly. And so by shifting it over to just the left channel, suddenly my audio issues cleared up. It was really simple. All right, that's the settings there. Now we're gonna come back over here and we're gonna go to the push to talk settings. now. Again, for the DigiRig, um, that is going to be a COM port connection. Um, if you're using other different types of devices, and you're going to see me switch radios here in a, in a second, I'm going to start jumping through a bunch of demos. Um, some of these you'll have to change to the CAT control. Um, others you'll have to change the specific uh, port uh, that's there. And then what's the PTT pin that's being used? On the DigiRig, again, it's the RTS pin that's used. You need to make sure you set the correct COM port, and you do that by coming down to your uh, Windows, right click on the Windows menu, come up here and go to Device Manager. And when your Device Manager comes up, you're looking for the COM ports. You're going to click on that. Let me make sure that's not right in front of my face. Um, here's your COM ports. And so for the DigiRig, that's a Silicon Labs, and notice the COM port. Just take note of what that particular COM port is set as because you're going to need to make sure that that's set to make everything work and that's those are the different settings that you're that you're working with Explain something.